Word up fellow mutants, welcome to another biology podcast. Today we're going to be doing chromosome mutations. That's following on from the point mutations that we did before. And on your screen right now you can see some quite interesting mutations that have happened to different animals there. Maybe some of them are a little bit more believable than others. But all the time we've got different phenotypes and those different phenotypes, whenever you've got sort of a different phenotype appearing, whether it's something that's quite normal, eye colour, or whether it's something quite strange or, or even quite alarming, like a disease or a disorder, then they're actually often due to changes in the genetic code that have become permanent, or mutations. So, for example, cystic fibrosis is as a, as a phenotype that's a result of a mutation, just like eye colour is a phenotype that is a result of a mutation happening in the past. The mutations we've talked about so far, like I said before, are the point mutations or the mutations that happen to one particular gene. But today we're going to be looking at bigger mutations that actually affect whole chromosomes or even more than one chromosome. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it and let's get into some biology. So we've already defined a mutation as a change in the DNA molecule that is permanent, a change in the order of bases, if you like, that is permanent. And we looked at those examples of how that can happen with substitution, inversion, deletions, and insertions um, that actually happens in gene mutations. However, it can also happen in chromosome mutations, so that's what we're going to look at right now. Now, chromosomes can mutate in two main ways. First of all, there can be a rearrangement of the genes where the chromosome actually splits up and parts of it actually move around. Or we could also end up with a different actual number of chromosomes in a cell as a caused by something called non-disjunction, but we'll talk about that later. So there are the main two types as you can see on your screen right now. And we're going to start off by looking at that first category, where genes or chromosomes are actually rearranged, where there's splitting of chromosomes and genes actually being moved around. So when we're actually looking at the rearrangement of genes like that, they can yet again be split into four different ways that this can happen, if you like. And that's shown on your screen right now. So the four different ways that that can happen, and you'll see some terms that have already been used in gene mutations here. Uh, there are deletions, inversions, something called translocations, and duplications. So the four different ways that we can have chromosome muta mutations happening when the genes are rearranged. And we're going to work through each one of those in turn and basically talk about what each one of those is. And hopefully that will help you fill out your notes grid. So let's start with the deletion. Now previously when we've used the term deletion, we've used it for point mutations. And a deletion in that sense is simply one base being deleted from the order of bases. And that causes frame shift and changing codons, etc, etc. Now that's quite different when we're talking about chromosome mutations. Since when we're talking about chromosome mutations, rather than just deleting one base from the uh, section of DNA, what we're actually going to be doing then is we're actually going to delete a section of the DNA, so like a, a lot of bases. And you can see that from the image there where you've actually got two breaks in the chromosome, a break there between 3 and 4 and another one between 6 and 7. Um, 4, 5 and 6 on the image there just fall out and then the two leftover pieces of chromosome join together. So rather than it be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, each of those numbers are representing a different gene along the chromosome, the final sort of end product of a deletion mutation would read 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. So 4, 5, and 6 would have been sections of the chromosome or genes that are on that chromosome that would have been deleted. So obviously the impact of that is that there are some genes missing from that chromosome and obviously if there's genes missing then they can't be transcribed and made into proteins, etc. Now I can also actually give you an example of a genetic disorder that is a result of a deletion mutation, a, a chromosome mutation, a deletion. Uh, and that's the Cri du Chat syndrome. Now don't worry, I wasn't swearing at you then. Cri du Chat is actually French for the cry of the cat or cry of cat. And basically that happens when there's been a deletion of some genes on chromosome number five and it results in the, the people that have that sort of problem, that deletion muta mutation, end up with a low birth weight and they're often mentally retarded. Now they're called cry du chat because um, they actually have a really high pitched cry when they're babies. It actually sounds like a, a screaming cat. So just to give you a bit of an idea, that's, that's just an example of a chromosome mutation in respect to a deletion. Okay, so that's deletions. Let's move on to the next type of chromosome um, mutation in terms of this rearrangement of the genes, and that's the inversion. So you should see appearing on your screen right now a new diagram, and the diagram will probably speak for itself, because what's happening here is you've actually got a section of the chromosome 
actually basically falling out of the chromosome if you actually like if you imagine it being cut out and then turned 180 degrees and put back in again and you can see that from the diagram just like the deletion diagram we've got a chromosome there with the numbers one to nine going down and we've got a break between three and four and another one between six and seven now that broken piece that actually lifts out of the chromosome then just rotates itself 180 sticks itself back in so what we end up having is a new chromosome if you like or a mutant chromosome with the, the order of those genes actually spun around. So instead of having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we've got 1, 2, 3, 6, 5, 4, 7, 8, 9. So that's an example of an inversion mutation. And I'm really sorry about this, but I don't actually have an example of a disorder that's caused by that. So maybe that's something you could find out yourself, stick that example on the wiki space. I'm sure we'd be interested to hear that. So that's inversion. Now let's go on to the third type of this rearrangement of gene mutations that happens in chromosomes and that's translocation and you'll see a new image coming up on your screens right now and um, I think the first thing I probably need to point out with the translocation mutation is it's actually just it's actually involving more than one chromosome this time so with both deletions and inversions we've involved a piece of a chromosome coming out of the chromosome and either being deleted or spun around and put back into the same chromosome but this we're actually talking this time we're actually talking about two different chromosomes being involved so in the diagram that you can see on your screen you can see you've got chromosome one at the top on the left and chromosome two underneath it and you can also see that there's a break in chromosome one where four five and six is actually sort of hanging off the bottom there it's actually broken off the bottom and then translocation actually happens when that broken piece of chromosome, and you can see there, is actually in the dark grey, 4, 5, and 6, actually translocates, it actually moves locations and joins on to chromosome number 2. So what you end up having in there is you end up with a really short chromosome number 1, that's just 1, 2, 3 now instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a much longer chromosome number 2. And just a bit extra here, the example you see there is what we call a non reciprocal translocation and what that means is that basically one chromosome has given a piece of its chromosome to another chromosome if you like so it's given the chromosome one has given the four five six piece to chromosome two but chromosome two has given nothing back to chromosome one so that's like what we call a non-reciprocal so it's not actually returned some translocations actually involve an exchange or a swapping of uh, pieces of chromosome um, so that's just a, a bit of a sort of difference there between different types of translocation mutations that can happen. And the other thing to point out here is that translocation happens between chromosomes that are not homologous. So you wouldn't have part of chromosome number one joining with chromosome, the other chromosome number one that's actually in the nucleus. You would have chromosome number one joining with number three or number five or whatever, but not the homologous pairs. So with this I can actually give you an example of a genetic disorder that can be caused by a translocation and it would be one that you're possibly familiar with as well. So one that I'm thinking of is Down syndrome. Now there are different causes of Down syndrome and we're going to talk about two different causes over the next couple of lessons. But the first cause potentially, and it's very rare that it's caused by this, but it can be caused by translocation. And that's where you have a section of DNA that actually translocates from chromosome number 21 and often translocates and moves to chromosome number 14. Now that sometimes means that when meiosis happens, if a person has actually got that translocation, and, and they will actually be normal, but when they produce gametes, they may produce gametes that have actually got um, two copies of that section of DNA, one copy on chromosome number 14 and one copy on chromosome number 21. So they end up giving their offspring three copies of those genes. And having three copies of those particular genes that are usually located on chromosome number 21 actually results in the baby the offspring, the person that's got those three copies, having Down syndrome. And if you're not sure, you don't completely understand that, don't worry too much, because when we actually go on to looking at another type of chromosome mutation, that idea of the number of chromosomes changing, that will become a little more clear. Okay, so now let's look at the fourth and final one of these rearrangement mutations that takes place in chromosomes, and that's duplication. And you'll see on your screen now, you've got the diagram there showing duplication, and we'll use that to explain what a duplication mutation is. So as the name would suggest, it involves duplication of some genes or part of a chromosome, so it basically means it's repeated. And in the diagram there you can see the normal chromosome on the left and then the mutated chromosome on the right. And you can see in the mutated chromosome that you've got six, seven, eight, and nine that have actually been duplicated, so they actually appear twice. And there's many different genetic disorders that are actually caused by duplications. And Huntingdon's disease is one of them. And that's caused by the triplet CAG, 
being repeated up to 100 times. So there's our 10 minutes, guys, and we'll leave it at that.